Hey everyone, welcome back to Drupal Studios. Today we're building a branching NPC dialogue system in Roblox using text box UIs and multiple choice buttons. You'll learn how to create a full on conversation between players and NPCs with different response paths. So let's jump into it. First, let's set up the NPC and the dialogue UI. So I'm going to click on character, R15 or whatever you want. I'm just going to use my avatar and drag it in over here. I'll rename the rig to NPC in the Explorer. And now I've got a little NPC here. Now I'm going to insert a proximity prompt into the NPC. And this is what we're going to click when we come up to the player to actually start the dialogue. Now that we've added that, if I was to hit play and walk over to the NPC over here. You see we get an interact button. You can customize this. For more information on proximity prompts, please check out my proximity prompt video. I will leave a link to that in the description. I'm just going to anchor the NPC as well so it doesn't fall over. Now in starter GUI, create a screen GUI with a frame. I'll just rename this to dialogue GUI. Here we go, so I've just resized the frame. Here's my size here, 0 0.4380, 0, 0 0.2910, and then I've just placed it on the bottom here and changed the transparency to 0 0.8. This is where we're going to have our multiple choice buttons and our text box. And inside the frame, I'm going to add a text label. And this will be the NPC's dialogue. So I'm at the size 1010 and then just bring it down. I'll make this transparency 0.8 as well. I'm not going to worry too much about the design of it because you can design it however you would like. I'm also going to add three text buttons. So add in a text button. The first one will be named option one. And I'll size this to how I want. So 1010 on the size, and then I can resize it and it will scale it. There's option one, and then I'll do option two, and then I'll do an option three. And I'll make these slightly different colors just so you can tell that they are different. There we go. I'll leave all the text the same because we'll adjust them in script later on. And I'm also going to add in a close button to this frame. So add a text button. I'll rename it to close button and put this top right and I will make this a sort of pinky red resize it to 1010 so I can scale it and then I'll just bring it down here and what I'll do is just change the text to be an X to close make probably Fredoka 1 as the font scale it up and make it white and that's our close button I know this UI design is very choppy, but I'm just trying to rush through the whole GUI. I've got a little mini series on GUI if you want to check that out. Now let's set the frame's visible property to false. That's why we've used the frame, so we can easily set all of these to not be visible all in one hit. Okay, now that the GUI is actually finished, let's create a dialogue manager module script inside of replicated storage. So add in a module script and rename this to dialogue manager. And in here, we're going to hold all our dialogue data and we're going to let other scripts get specific steps. So we'll say, we'll rename this from local module, we'll say local dialogue manager equals an empty table and we will return the dialogue manager. Now we're not actually going to use this table directly only for functions, but what we are going to do is create a dialogue tree. And this will be a numbered tree, sort of like a flowchart, and each step has NPC text and free response options for our free buttons. Of course you can have more responses if you want more options. If you want say five responses, you can do that. You'll see how in a second. So I will say local dialogue tree equals table. And in here, let's get the first index. Index one, so this is the first dialogue item. The text will be whatever the NPC is going to say. So the first thing the NPC will say to the player is, I'm going to say, hello there, traveler. What brings you here? I'm going to put a semicolon after this and then add an options table. And in here, we're going to have our three options or however many buttons you have. So text will be, for option one, actually it'll be a new table, and the text will be, uh, I'm looking for treasure. 
and then I'll put a semicolon after this and I will do my response for the second option which will be just exploring and then the third option which will be none of your business and you don't need a semicolon after the last line you can have one but you don't need one and then after this, I'm going to put a semicolon, copy it all, and make this dialog item number two. So change this to a number two. And you're just going to follow this on. So your item number two will be your response to if you say, I'm looking for treasure. And then the NPC will reply saying, treasure. Huh? And so on. I'm just going to quickly fill all of these out. Make sure you've got your dialogues planned. And then I'll get back to you once I've filled mine all out. Here we go. Now, I know you're looking at this and you're probably like, oh, what does this next mean? Well, let me explain what I've done. So I've got a response. So my dialogue two is my response to answer one of dialogue one. Dialogue three is my response to answer two of dialogue one. And response four, a uh, dialogue four, sorry, is the answer to response three of dialogue one. And then five is the answer of this and so on. And it basically all loops. So what I've done is created a reply to every answer. And what the next word does is link these connections. So if I reply with I'm looking for treasure, next equals two. So put a comma after the text and then say next equals two. And this basically means that the NPC will reply to this answer with dialogue two, which is this one here saying treasure, huh? You're brave. The forest is dangerous. Of course, your text will probably be different unless you're copying this word for word, in which case feel free to quickly pause at different states to get all the text you need. But that's all I've done. So these next is just the next dialogue. I can't really show you how to do this much more because you're going to obviously have your own sort of story with the conversation. But for example, let's say I'm say I'm looking for treasure. So next is two. Then it says, treasure, huh? You're brave. The forest is dangerous. Then I'll reply, do you know where it is? And that will be next is seven. So my dialogue seven is say, some say it's hidden beneath the waterfall. And then I'll say, sounds like a myth. And then next equals six. Take your time. I'll be here if you need anything. And then what I can do is say, actually, I changed my mind. And it loops back. So you can create these loops. Or I could just say goodbye. And then if I want the conversation to end and I don't want a next step, I'll just say next equals nil, which just means the conversation ends. Then after this, we need to create a function to get a specific dialogue step based on its number. So function dialogue manager. Dot get step passing in the state and we just return dialogue tree state in square brackets. And make sure this dialogue manager is spelt the same as it is in this return bit here. Now we can close the module script. Now let's create a local script inside of the frame. And I will rename this to dialogue UI. And this script handles showing the NPC dialogue and reacting to button clicks. So we'll start by getting the frame. So local frame is script.parent. And then local dialogue text is frame colon wait for child text label next we need to get all three response options so rather than having three variables for response option one two and three i'll just make it all one table so i can say local buttons equals table with frame colon wait for child option one with a semicolon after and then frame colon wait for child option two semicolon and then my frame colon wait for child option three and i don't need a semicolon after the last one next we'll get the dialogue system from the module script so local dialogue manager equals require and we need to get replicated storage as well so at the top i will say local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage and then in here we can say replicated storage colon wait for child dialogue manager which will wait for the dialogue manager to exist and whenever you require whenever you want to access a module script from another script you have to use the require keyword next we need to keep track of which buttons are currently connected and by connected i mean have a click event connected to them so we'll say local current connections equals and then an empty table 
and whenever we add a click event to the buttons it's going to get added to this table because when we end conversation for example we need to disconnect these click events to prevent stacking listeners essentially so we'll say local function clear buttons underscore comma connection in i pairs and in here passing in current connections do if connection dot disconnect then we'll say connection colon disconnect and call that method so if we can disconnect to the connection we want to disconnect it after the for loop we can say current connections equals a new empty table so this clears all the connections so any click events get cleared meaning the button won't do anything when clicked now we need a function to show a specific step in the dialog tree so local function show dialog passing in the state we'll get the step so local step is dialog manager dot get step passing in the state and this returns the step which would be for example here for example number two if not step then so this just means if the step is nil so when we get our step say next is nil then the state here will become nil so when we get step nil well that won't return anything that will just be nil so step will be nil which means we want the dialog to end we need to close the ui so frame.visible is false and then we will return otherwise after this we will update the npc's text which will say dialog text dot text equals step dot text and then we'll clear the old connections before adding new ones clear buttons and then we can loop through the buttons and we need to show the button and set the option text and then add the click event to it so we can say or i comma button in i pairs buttons do local option equals step dot options and then passing in i so button one gets option one of the step so say step is two button one will get this text or this option table button two will get this one and button three will get that one we can then say if option then show the button and set the option text so button dot visible is true and button dot text equals option dot text and then when it's clicked we need to move to the next step in the dialog so local connection equals button dot mouse button one click colon connect function and here we'll call the show dialog function passing in option dot next and then we need to save the connection so we can disconnect it later on so table dot insert we're going to insert into the current connections table the connection after this we'll say else so if the option does not exist then we want to hide the button so button dot visible equals false so if you only have two options rather than three the third button will be hidden and after all of this we're going to use a global table which is underscore g it needs to be underscore and then uppercase g for a global table essentially dot start dialog equals show dialog now we can close that dialog ui script and we need to create a trigger script so inside of starter player scripts add a local script and rename this to trigger script and this script triggers the dialogue when the player interacts with the npc so we'll get our player local player well first of all let's get the service so local players is game colon get service players and then we can say local player equals players dot local player then we can say local gui equals player colon wait for child player gui make sure it's spelled exactly like this and then local frame equals gui colon wait for child dialogue and then the name of the frame which is just frame although we are actually missing a step because the gui will be wait for child player, player gui colon wait for child dialogue gui because that's the name of this screen gui 
So wait for child player GUI, and then wait for child the name of the screen GUI. It needs to be spelt the exact same. And then we will do frame as GUI, go and wait for child frame. Next, we'll say local NPC equals workspace, go and wait for child NPC. And local prompt equals NPC, go and wait for child proximity prompt. Now we'll say prompts.triggered. Again, if you want more information about proximity prompts, please check my video out on them. Colon connect function frame.visible equals true. And then we'll call the dialog system and start at step one. So if underscore g dot start dialog, then. So if that function on the global table exists, then we'll call it. So underscore g dot start dialog asking in one in a bracket here and now back in our dialogue ui local script let's create the close button logic so just before this underscore g dot start dialogue the last line i'm just going to drop down and add local close button equals frame colon wait for child close button so close button dot mouse button one click colon connect function and in here we'll say frame.visible is false to make the frame not visible. And then we want to clear the buttons. And that's that. Now if we hit test and play, let's see if this works. So let's go over to our NPC. Hit E. And we've got, hello there, traveler. What brings you here? Let's say none of your business. And then it comes up with our next option. Or well, someone's grumpy. Stay safe, I guess. And I'll say, sorry, I'm just tired. And you can see I get the full um, dialogue here. And even if I say something like, none of your business, goodbye, it ends the dialogue. And the next time I start it, it always brings up back to square one. So that works perfect. So that's your advanced dialogue NPC system. If you want to add more NPCs, what you'd do is just create, let's say I made a new NPC. I'd give it a different name, maybe NPC2. You can make a module script for each NPC. So this would be NPC one's manager, and then you'd make a new manager with a new tree, etc. And then you'd have a new trigger script, etc. But that is the very basics just to get one NPC done. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and check out our Discord server. The link and more information is in the description. You can ask for programming help there, chat with others and share your projects. So thanks for watching and goodbye everyone.